Well, the first vote in the U.S. presidential race is just two weeks away. On Sunday, Democratic candidates held their last debate before voting day at the Iowa caucuses. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton sparred over everything from gun control to health care. And there's been growing support for Sanders in the polls. As Secretary Clinton well knows, when this campaign began, she was 50 points ahead of me. We were all of three percentage points. Guess what? In Iowa, New Hampshire, the race is very, very close. Now, senior political reporter Stephen Collinson joins us live from Washington. Stephen, health care, of course, was a major issue debated last night. Uh, Hillary Clinton adamant that she wants to see Obamacare stay, but something Bernie Sanders and, of course, most of the Republicans have opposed. Uh, what can Clinton gain from showing strong support for Obama's legacy? I think, Linda, what, Bernie, uh, what Hillary Clinton is trying to do is twofold. First of all, she knows that to win the nomination of the Democratic Party and to win the presidency in a general election, she needs to reassemble that Obama coalition that swept the president to power in 2008 uh, and re-elected him in 2012. That means appealing to African-American voters, Hispanic voters, younger, well-educated voters. So what she's trying to do is pose as the ultimate defender of the president and the only person that can protect his legacy. Uh, and by defending the president on Obamacare, she's also taking a shot at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, what he'd like to do is introduce a system that's far more uh, wide-ranging than Obamacare, which is still, in essence, a private insurance system. He wants to make a system that's on the, along the lines of the healthcare systems in the UK or Canada, a state-run healthcare system. Hillary Clinton is saying, OK, that's a great idea in theory, but in principle it's not going to happen. And if we reopen the debate uh, over health care, over Obamacare, we're going to let Republicans back in and they could possibly uh, dent or even end Obamacare as a result of that debate. So she's trying to uh, have it both ways. She's defending the president and she's also trying to go after Bernie Sanders, who's uh, increasingly competitive in those two early states you mentioned, Linda. Uh, that's right. He's uh, actually ahead of her in, uh, in those uh, key states. How do you think it will play out over the next two weeks between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton? It's going to be very interesting. That, as you say, that was the last debate before voting starts. I think we're going to see some feverish campaigning by Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders in Iowa and New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders, according to the last poll, was 14 points ahead of Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. That's the second vote. Uh, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are about neck and neck within the margin of error of the polls in Iowa. So I think you're going to see a real intense focus on Iowa. If Hillary Clinton wins Iowa, uh, even if Bernie Sanders goes on to win New Hampshire a week later, the, the nomination is to all intents and purposes in her grasp because she can go on to South Carolina after that and this big sweep of southern states where she's very popular uh, and likely put this nomination away in the first few months of the contest. If Hillary Clinton were to lose Iowa and New Hampshire, that would revive the memories of 2008. She was a prohibitive frontrunner then and she lost to Barack Obama when Barack Obama won Iowa and it started the dominoes falling in her campaign. So the Clinton campaign is very nervous about Iowa uh, and if she were to lose that first race, I think it would be cast some very serious questions about how long this campaign can last and even if Bernie Sanders could uh, overcome her in the end, Linda. And Stephen, it is easy to forget that uh, there is a third Democratic candidate. Martin O'Malley was on the stage last night. Uh, is there any chance he could be the dark horse in this race? I don't think so. I think last night was a microcosm of this entire campaign for Martin O'Malley, the former governor of Maryland. Uh, he couldn't get a word in edgeways. He kept saying, oh, can I just have 10 seconds? <laughs> it's sort of emblematic of the fact that he's not got into this, into this campaign. The problem for Martin O'Malley is he uh, strategized that, OK, I have to get to the left of Hillary Clinton, who is much uh, more centrist than many Democrats. He didn't bargain on Bernie Sanders coming along and, uh, and, and sort of firing up the progressive base and taking away that spot from him as the alternative to Hillary Clinton. So there's just no space for Martin O'Malley. He's at about 2% in Iowa. I think uh, if that is reflected in the voting in a couple of weeks' time, uh, we'll see him probably exit the campaign after Iowa. All right, Stephen Collinson, we will talk to you again soon on this. Thanks so much. Thanks, Linda. Well, U.S. astronaut Scott Kelly says there are other life forms aboard the International Space Station. Now, he's referring to this, a zinnia flower grown from seed entirely in microgravity. The latest blooms were nurtured in a plant growing system called Veggie, which was installed on the ISS back in 2014. 
nice to have fresh flowers. <laughs> now that does it for us here at the International Desk. I'm Linda Kincaid. Don't go anywhere. Marketplace Africa is coming up next.